Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another book review. Today we are talking about Colson Whitehead's The Nickel Boys. Uh, I read this one over the course of about three or four days with my friend Jessica uh, over at uh, Hopelessly Devoted Bibliophile. I'll leave a link to her blog down there in the doobly-doo. But this book is fantastic. Uh, there's not a whole lot that I want to say about it um, other than uh, what I say in my written review, which I will link also down there in the doobly-doo. Uh, but this book, it, it inspired the same feelings, evoked the same feelings um, that uh, of Mice and Men and One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Uh, both of those books I thought of while I was reading this one. Um, they're, the characters are very, very well done especially the character of Elwood, who is the main character of the story. Uh, there are so many instances where I, I was laughing and then crying right afterward. Uh, so I think it was chapter 10. There's a line of dialogue in here about a handsome woman. And one of the, one of the characters just goes, uh, said, the one character says, uh, is she pretty? Something like that. Uh, the back and forth is, is she pretty? And the other character says, uh, she's described as a handsome, wom a handsome woman, and the other guy just says, damn. <laughs> That's it. Um, I got a kick out of that. Uh, but then, like, five pages later, I was in tears. So there, there's a lot of stuff like that. There's a lot of hope, and then dashing of hope, and then hope again, and so on and so forth. It's one of those books. So if you're looking to be destroyed um, by a piece of fiction, definitely check out uh, The Nickel Boys. One of, the, uh, one of the things that I found interesting in the afterword, I'm not going to go into it too much, but Colson Whitehead goes into why, uh, what inspired the book. Uh, there were some true happenings that happened, I think, down in Florida, or is it Arkansas? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going to go into it too much. But uh, it does, the story is inspired by an actual boy's home. Um, and I, I didn't look up any other information in there, but he uses quotes from real people throughout the book. And I found the, the, where, the where the quotes came from very interesting. Um, pieces, bits and pieces, how he puzzled it together. So definitely, if you check this out, definitely read the afterword. It's worth your time. Um, he, he gives uh, inspirations, and then he gets, gets into the thank yous. But it's not just a list of thank yous like most afterwords are. Um, in fact, there's... I think it helps the story quite a bit. Usually I don't care too much for afterwards. Joe Hill does them right, I think, because he hides stories in the afterwards, the continuations of certain sto uh, of the story, like in Nosferatu and in The Fireman. In this one, the the backstory, the history behind why he why uh, Colson Whitehead wrote the book is very very interesting. This one is wholly rooted in reality. So if you've read his other books, like the um, like Zone One or The Intuitionist, I have not read those, but from reading the descriptions, they're not really rooted in reality. I have read The Underground Railroad, which I absolutely loved. Um, that one has some magical realism elements to it. This one doesn't have any of that in there. Um, now, as far as historical accuracy for the time frame and whatnot, I don't know if he played around with it. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be taken literally as, as historical fiction. Um, but I did recognize some things that happened throughout time, but, uh, th you know, throughout history. But with the Underground Railroad, one of the things that he did was, you know, he had, like, the, the syphilis testings, what was it, the Tuskegee experiments. He had that happening during, you know, the Civil War era, um, which, of course, didn't happen. It was interesting the way he did the alternate history. So, But I'm not 100% sure if this is an alternate history or not. I'm not up on my history of this time frame. Um... There, there was an instance where I was confused on how old people were and how much time had passed because we went from, I thought it was the 50s to, to 2014, but the character wasn't the correct age, so I'm not sure if I missed something there. If you guys have read it and you know what I'm talking about, maybe I just completely spaced out. I don't know or did my math wrong because I'm a reader, not a, not a mathematician. Uh, if you guys want to let me know how I screwed that up or um, if you caught the same thing, let me know down there in the comments below. Also, anybody who's read this, let me know if you like it, if you dislike it, if, especially if you dislike it. I love opposing opinions as long as you're not rude about it. Um, let me know down there in Doobly Doo exactly why 
you do not like it. If you like it, let me know why so we can have a discussion. That's what, that's what I feel that the doobly-doo is for, or the comment section is for, is for those discussions, not just, you know, great review or this or that. And I love hearing that stuff, don't get me wrong, but I want to be able to talk to you guys. It's gotten to the point where the channel has become um, successful enough that I get, you know, loads of comments, but I'm not responding to many of them because I'm saving the responses and my time to respond them for people who are actually wanting to carry on a conversation. So if you're wondering why I'm no longer responding to everybody in the comment section, that's why. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another book review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!